We're joined by Dr. Jerome Corsi. He's worked as a consultant with the State Department and worked in international banking, you name it. He's a best-selling, uh, number one New York Times uh, best-selling author. He also writes for World Net Daily. He's got a new book out, What Went Wrong. We'll talk about that briefly before he leaves us. But the main reason I wanted to get him on is that I've had friends, family call me, people in the office. I've heard them on the, the Genesis Network. Uh, one of your sources, the Moriari family, and they're on the air going, believe us, we promised there's jihadis from Saudi Arabia when we had a business in Libya, and our government's funding them, and we told the government, and they tell Al-Qaeda where to move, and we promise we're not making this up. I mean, the CFR came out two years ago and said, quote, we need Al-Qaeda. Uh, they admit the main force attacking Syria and, and Libya before it is Al-Qaeda. They admit the people that killed the ambassador at the safe house over the weapons deal was the Benghazi local security force that is Al-Qaeda. They have people with Al-Qaeda flags throwing the Christians off roofs with the flags, with the shaved heads, and the big beards. I mean, every day there's new footage of them killing people. And so it's, you know, I, I hear these folks on the radio, and I'm, I guess I could get them on, but it's kind of like, Alex, believe us, we were there, the sun comes up, the water is wet, we promise that ducks quack, uh, so my whole issue is, I know people like a story, like witnesses to it, but I've had reporters on that were there and saw this when the war was going on. Wayne Madsen, Webster Tarpley, you name it. I mean, there's the Council on Foreign Relations, Al-Qaeda specter in Syria. And you go to the bottom of the article and it says, truth is, we need Al-Qaeda. They're good fighters. Well, And, and that was, a, again, a year and a half ago. This is all over the LA Times, all over the news. Our government helped create Al-Qaeda against the Russians. They helped use them against the Serbs, Clinton did. And then they've used them again over and over again, and they use the threat to take our liberties. The Boston Bombers' brother was in some CIA program. I mean, the ignorance level out there that is it true what course he's writing that Obama is protecting Al-Qaeda? I mean, it's like saying, is it true that Rudolph has a red nose? Is it true that the Easter Bunny's a rabbit? I mean, it, it, it just is unbelievable. So Dr. Corsi... Uh, I wanted to get uh, your take on this because, I mean, I've even seen the Wall Street Journal admit 60 plus percent of the force in Syria is Al-Qaeda. They're leading it. But there's this ignorance gap. And then it's like, well, the U.S. is kind of halfway funding them. There's no kind of halfway. Uh, what's really going on here? And, and how does this, this, this man and woman in their business over there that saw some of this, how does that fit into this? Well, the, uh, the, the Moriarty's who you refer to, Joanne and her husband, uh, have been sources, but they have been in touch with uh, Libyan expatriates in the region. And uh, the documents is what have driven the stories I've written, uh, documentary evidence of uh, the ties between Al-Qaeda and uh, Libya, Al-Qaeda and the Benghazi attack. All that you point out is true. Uh, and, uh, you know, the reason I continue to publish it, the reason I want to continue publishing it is because the government, the Obama administration wants to, the story to go away. They want, the Obama administration wants to ignore the reality. And the more documentation we can get that, um, you know, proves from original sources, including sources in the Egyptian government, that Al-Qaeda was involved in the, or in fact, Morsi was involved the former head of Egypt, in the Benghazi attack, I think the documents are compelling. Well, yeah, that's why they got rid of the 31-year globalist Western installed, but he was a nice guy compared to Morrissey. Uh, that's why they got rid uh, of the last leader of Egypt, because because he, uh, he wasn't going along with shipping the weapons into Al-Qaeda uh, out of um, Egypt into Libya. I mean, that all came out, too. And also into uh, Syria. I mean, the they're shipping the weapons into now Turkey, and the Al Qaeda weapons are up, ending up in the, the so-called freedom fighters or the rebels in Syria fighting Assad. I mean, in Assad, in the in the battle in Syria, there's no good side. They're both, you know, and, and we are probably going to end up backing uh, the rebels, which means siding once again with Al Qaeda. Uh, people still don't understand, Alex, that the destabilization of the Middle East was one of the Obama administration main purposes in supporting what they call the Arab Spring. 
Uh, the Arab Spring was not a democracy movement. There was no chance that the uh, movements in the streets against Mubarak in Egypt or against Gaddafi in Libya were going to end up in anything resembling a Western democracy. They're all going to ultimately be co-opted and were by the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda. And you've got in Libya today a situation that's really a, a chaos with various Al-Qaeda factions competing for control. And we see uh, different puppets uh, being removed that you just mentioned, like in Egypt, to put yes. in Morrissey. And then uh, on top of that, Hazi Mubarak just disappears. All hell breaks loose. Uh, we've got reports of Israel reportedly uh, aiding the rebels in the south uh, with ambulances and weapons as well. I know that's caused a fissure in Israel. I mean, I get geopolitically, I, I think it's very immoral, stirring people up to kill each other. But if it causes an even bigger destabilization and it's bad for American interest and, and, and any other interest, then it's even more immoral because the way I see this is it's going to make it's going to make things only good for the weapons contractors. I mean, what's what's the larger geopolitical things behind this? Well, I agree with you. I mean, ultimately, whether, you know, the CIA manipulation that I'm sure is involved in the middle of this, uh, what the Obama administration is achieving is destabilizing the entire region and pushing the region into much more of a radical Islamic control. Now, you know, from Israel's point of view, it's going to be, Israel is increasingly threatened. They had a submarine attack on, evidently, on Syria to eliminate some of the missiles that Syria has accumulated. And that stirred up Russia. Well, Russia is backing Assad, and Russia is backing Iran. And Iran continues to push for nuclear weapons. Uh, the Obama administration has now insisted with Secretary of State Kerry that Israel negotiate willing to go back to the borders of the 1967, before the 1967 war. Yeah. Well, those borders are indefensible. Well, what I'm asking you is why is Israel, it looks like on the surface, working with NATO and the West on this? It looks like a schizophrenic policy. I get that they want to take down the Iran regime. I get they want to kick the ally Assad out. I'm saying it's very immoral to go start a war with Assad two and a half years in, back Al-Qaeda, exterminate Christians, watch our media cover it up, but then we're going to limitedly, you know, criticize Obama for working with Al-Qaeda when he's really working in the larger NATO plan to bring it down by hook or by crook to be able to go after Iran. And then my big issue is stop saying you've got to take my rights because of Al-Qaeda threat when the government clearly is using Al-Qaeda as a sock puppet. So, I mean, let's just cut right to the chase of what's happening here. Well, I think it's absolutely immoral to support Al-Qaeda. I don't see how we can possibly do it. Uh, especially after the big hoopla about killing Osama bin Laden. And uh, it, it's there's no way you can justify these radical Islamic extremists armed, uh, wanting to destabilize regimes. Al-Qaeda is the worst of the worst. And, and Al-Qaeda stands for a lot of different radical elements sure. that operate under Al-Qaeda. And the United States should never be backing these. I agree with you entirely. I, it, it, it all right, well, let me ask you this. Getting off the rhetoric that Israel, NATO, the U.S., France all put out, I look at real facts. I right. see a slowdown. They claimed they were going to send arms. Now it looks like there's been a slowdown. Uh, that looks like there are elements in the power structure that actually don't like this idea. You have your ear to the ground in D.C. with a lot of high-level contacts. Are there real splits in the power structure over handing the Middle East over to al-Qaeda? Yes, there are. There's very serious concerns about handing it over to Al-Qaeda. And there's very serious concerns about uh, Iran becoming much more dominant in the region. Uh, also very unreported is that there is a uh, Sunni rebellion going on. You saw it in the um, Abu Ghraib prison riot this past weekend where a group of radical Sunnis attacked Abu Ghraib and released basically al-Qaeda Sunnis, uh, they're opposing the Shiite regime that we put into place when we left Iraq. So Iraq is about to be destabilized, and, and al-Qaeda will be in the middle of that as well. Uh, al-Qaeda throughout the region and the bro Muslim Brotherhood are working hand in hand. Yeah, so who controls al-Qaeda, the Muslim Brotherhood or Saudi Arabia? I think ultimately no one controls al-Qaeda entirely. I think al-Qaeda is really 
become kind of a lawless criminal uh, organization that is out for its own good. And then, and the defense contractors are the same because they just want to shell robots to local police. And you know, we still don't have Alex a firm answer of what Benghazi was all about. I mean, were we running arms through Benghazi to the uh, to the Al Qaeda to destabilize Gaddafi? Is that why? Well, I think we know that's what happened. I mean, even uh, I would think so, but I think that's why Stevens was probably there even before he was ambassador in in Benghazi. Came in in a boat to Benghazi, and then you know what was the reason for Stevens being, he had a meeting with one of the Turkish diplomats in Benghazi the day he was killed. Foreign minister. Foreign minister, what were they doing? Are they trying to recover weapons that they were, you know, these, these man pads or other surface to air missiles that were lost and missing and probably being shipped through Turkey. To yeah, that Syria. does sound like a double cross because, I mean, I can't imagine the globalists as corrupt as they are wanting Al-Qaeda to have 10,000 heat-seeking missiles. And, I, you know, again, what was... What was that meeting about? Uh, also, why didn't we send in military to help uh, the Americans who were under well, attack? Well, stay there. Give us the latest update on Benghazi, and then also tell us about your book. I want to get you on for a full hour about your book in the next few weeks, what went wrong. Johnny Appleseed was born during the Revolutionary War. He's not just a legend. And in more than five states, he introduced apples that had not even been grown in the colonies. Later, the seeds from plants he planted and cultivated and some of the varieties he developed spread across the United States. And it was Johnny Appleseed teaching the colonists and then the new Americans after we won independence the love of planting fruit trees that introduced that idea to North America. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a revolutionary act to unplug from the television, to unplug from the computer and all the globalist propaganda and to go out in your backyard or your front yard or planters at your apartment or on the roof of the building where you live and to plant a garden. Become the Johnny Appleseed of your community with seeds from the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsStore.com. The simple act of planting fruits and vegetables and then tending them and taking care of them and then sharing them with friends and family is a revolutionary act against tyranny. The globalists, first and foremost, do not want us to be self-sufficient. The crony anti-free market capitalist, the fascist, are using socialism and collectivism to shut down societies. Stalin in Poland and in Ukraine and other areas, starved on record more than 10 million people over five years by not letting them grow their own crops and collectivizing them. Mao killed between 65 million and 80 plus million people doing this same thing. The UN says they will use food as a weapon. They use genetic evil to attack the earth and major GMO companies have been caught going into growth belts around the world, even where GMO is illegal, and planting seeds everywhere to infect the genetics of the original crops. Almost all of the thousands of varieties of Mexican corn has been infected. They are in a genetic war against everyone. That's why we have to get these seeds and not just plant them on our own gardens and not just give them as gifts to friends and family to plant spring and summer and fall gardens. I'm calling on you to go out into the green belts, to go out into the areas and plant secret gardens. No, not of marijuana, but of the hundreds and hundreds of incredible high quality uh, vegetables and herbs and fruit plants that are here. Lemons and oranges, the list goes on and on. They will grow uh, plum trees, grape trees. They will grow almost everywhere in the U.S. We can literally, not just buying these products from InfoWarsStore.com, but from wherever you get them. This aggressive program literally just came to me one morning when I woke up about 4 a.m. realizing that we've got to counter their genetic war against us with original real crops developed over eons on this planet. We have the lowest prices we bought it in the biggest bulk that some of these companies have ever seen to ship this directly to you from the InfoWars Command Center. We stand for life. 
We stand for liberty. We stand for self-sufficiency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, click on the Seed Center, and as of taping this, we have the seven top respected brands. We intend to continue to do research and find other companies, other specialties, other varieties to really take action. The InfoWars Store Seed Center has the largest online selection of heirloom, non-GMO seeds. Check out these products from our newest supplier, Heirloom Organics. The Medicine Garden for a natural remedy. The Tea Garden that contains every important tea herb you can grow. Fruit lovers with 12 varieties. And the Tobacco Pack, additive and pesticide free. Join the gardening revolution today at InfoWarsStore.com. This is a revolutionary action we're asking you to take. Plant seeds everywhere today. Nurture them, bring them to fruit, and pass on the knowledge to others. Become human again. Discover your roots in the soil. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. <laughs> All right, final segment with Dr. Jerome Corsi's new books out, What Went Wrong. I want to get him on about the book specifically. I only got six minutes. I'll give you the floor and try to shut up here. A, what really went on at Benghazi? What's going on with that cover-up? The Navy SEAL families now want investigations of their helicopter blowing up. That's happening. Obama's got the lowest approval rating ever. Congress does as well. The whole thing's in free fall. The NSA stuff's come out. Uh, lowest approval rating ever for Obamacare. What do you, finish up with Benghazi, and then what is the state of the republic right now and where things are going, and what rabbits can Obama pull out of the hat? Well, first of all, the, the Benghazi investigation, the key issues are the survivors. I think they are the ones who can tell the story of what happened on the ground, and the survivors uh, have been kept from Congress uh, those who have been retired or forced to retire have been signing non-disclosure agreements. A couple of the key survivors are talking to Congress this week, uh, very behind the scenes. One of them, I think, can be made to testify, still with the military. And the issue uh, there is, you know, what was Obama doing on the night of Benghazi? What was, was he even in the White House? Why weren't we responding? Um, well, you know, when you have... And officials saying, well, we couldn't get the airplanes over there. We couldn't refuel them. Many uh, pilots I know, many Air Force pilots uh, would say, we don't care if you can refuel us. Well, you tell us where we're going to land. We're going to get over there and save these guys. But that's all pure bull. I mean, that's all on record. Italy's right there. There's U.S. bases right. everywhere. There's everywhere. U.S. aircraft in the, in the country. But they're still denying it from the White House. See, that's the key point, is the White House is still denying it. And Yeah, but the testimony they already had contradicted the White House. Of course, but yet, you know, one, one of the whole points, I think, of this Trayvon Martin, and I've been saying it on radio, is to whip up the country on a racial issue so as to shove off of the agenda make the news not cover no no just like the bin laden raid was meant to cover up your book on the birth certificate well and here you're covering up benghazi you're covering our up covering up the irs investigation into the you know tea party discrimination which the government administration using the irs to go after conservatives and by the way uh, just as a footnote here uh, people should be aware that if the obama administration was able to use the irs to go after Tea Party and conservative groups, the NSA is, I'm sure, going after selectively. Of course. Those that are conservatives. Those it turned out the cloakroom's been bugged. That's not even news. Exactly. And see, the entire description of before Japan, Janet Napolitano resigned, a targeting Tea Party members, targeting conservatives. Alex, targeting your audience. Targeting oh, yeah. Why did she really resign, do you think? Is well, I think, I think that there's just too much. Uh, the investigations into the NSA, I think, are going to lead to the political use of that data, motivated to go after conservatives, driven by Department of Homeland Security, targeting conservative groups every bit as much as the IRS targeted consumer groups. Which is just flaming authoritarianism. What does your gut tell you? What happens to Obama? Uh, does he just sail off into the sunset? Does Obamacare get repealed? Do they false flag us? What do they do? Well, the major problem right now is that we're going to run out of money. 
And that you're going to see this in Detroit. There's no way to bail out Detroit. There's probably $2 trillion of unfunded pension liabilities. Cities and states are going to be going into default over the next two years in a massive amount. And Obamacare will probably be at least an effort made to defund it. And I think a, a great number of Democrats within Congress are going to support that. Yeah. Even the unions have turned against Obamacare. I mean, this is going to be one of the most disastrous pieces of legislation ever passed. But Obama didn't pass it so it would work. He passed it so the foot would be in the door, even if it's repealed. Now he's established the principle of universal health That's healthcare. right. It was clouded and pivot. And, and, but, you but, but, get it up in place, and then you expand it to the point where the system can't sustain it. That's the entire approach of the Obama social welfare system. Yeah, collapse the system. And... Yes. Uh, I mean, it's incredible what a ripoff it is. I can't believe raising payroll taxes on poor people that he's gotten away with that with his idiot constituents. Well, and or the pitting of, again, you know, the whole issue, another issue getting people riled up about Trayvon Martin is they don't ask then what has Obama really done for African Americans? We have double digit unemployment among the African Americans. Well, he doubled their unemployment. He did that for them. And. Detroit, a city which is 81% minority, again, you've got massive unemployment, massive drug problems, broken families, children born out of wedlock, and the Obama administration has done nothing to address these issues except to whip up the emotions of the people in a divisive exactly. way. Exactly. It's a giant diversion, Dr. Corsi. We're going to talk to you very soon. You want to do five more minutes with us. We have our next guest coming up. Viewers have demanded it, so now you're going to get it. More pro-Second Amendment gun shows in the month of June. What we've learned is you cannot hide behind an I-beam when there's a 50 cal present. Brothers in Arms, 50 cal ammo review and more coming in the month of June to the info war we've really gotten to the moment of truth with Obamacare and globalism and all this where they are either gonna really break this country forever or members of the establishment that who are not completely insane are gonna back this off but you've got the big mega banks that are anti-free market monopoly capitalists like Bloomberg who are anti-individual wealth and really disdain American values. Al Gore, people like that. Uh, and here it is, Trayvon protest organized by communists who praise Stalin and Mao. That's the story up on Infowars.com. The Revolutionary Communist Party has coordinated Trayvon Martin protest throughout the country. And our article turns out, this is in San Francisco Weekly. This is confirmed. They're not even denying this that the Justice Department's been involved as well. And they've sent federally funded groups that we and others identified, where they use you know, kind of like acorn light groups, enviro groups and others, to go hold up signs and pose as anti-black racist supporting Zimmerman. So we're seeing false flags, just the dirtiest stuff being used to create political division. And this is the essence of race-based politics that you always see out of socialists and communists funded by the big monopoly capitalists. I want you to speak to that briefly, that paradox, to try to explain that to conservatives and libertarians that don't click to that. And that there are a lot of rich people that actually got it through government or insider deals and they're not our friends. How do we deal with them supporting the, 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 the program of bankrupting the country because they're exempt from the taxes, the regulations. And then let's talk about your new book and what it gets into and how we pull out of this. Well, the book is about that. I mean, what I'm saying in the book, if you'll permit me just briefly, is that um, it, the Obama invented, it's kind of like money ball to baseball. Obama created a new metrics in uh, presidential politics. So Romney, I was on the campaign plane for three weeks. I traveled with Romney as traveling press. Romney thought he had won coming back on election day, told the press he hadn't even written a concession speech. Romney didn't understand the game that the Democrats were now playing, just like a money ball changes the way baseball is conceptualized and played on the field. The point is that 
The Democrats do play a divide and conquer form of very hardball interest group politics in which the idea is to you know, whip up the black voters, whip up the Hispanics. Hispanics thought they were going to be deported if Romney won. You know, and there's no attempt to deliver any benefits. There's no attempt to get Hispanics jobs or to get the dream back. Oh, you can go to college, but like everybody else in college, what are you going to do afterwards? You're going to drive a cab? There aren't any jobs. I mean, people have to finally understand, I think, Alex, that what you said is true. The divide and conquer politics, the rub raw, the like Saul Linsky said, the social, the economic, the racial disconnect. Well, that's communism 101. Collapse things what? so you can take over. Collapse it, have it all fall apart. The bankruptcies that are going on, Obama's smart enough to know that the higher income brackets pay most of the income tax. The rich aren't paying their fair share is a slogan. It's meant to whip up the economic dissatisfaction. Rich are paying, but they're the nouveau riche. The mega rich are offshore, and it's the Warren Buffett's lobbying to raise middle class taxes. I'm, I'm pointing out how these themes are used. They're sure. Shifted. And uh, the, the Democrats have gotten out of the universities some of the best political science, demographics. De Democrats are marketing, uh, 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 first of all, framing psychologically the Republicans so that Romney's immediately seen as a rich guy, out of touch. Bain oh, yeah, they admit they're anthropologists, psychologists running a job. Exactly. But, but then Romney's bad, too. It's like they've got it well, fixed so at every level. But see, the point is, the, the Democrats are playing a game of hardball politics with sophisticated computer 21st century science the Republicans don't even understand, nor do the people. You're they right. They admit with Facebook and Google helping them, they are literally databasing and using war game computers on record to, to just scientifically manipulate people. And, and it's incredible. How do you counter something like that? Well, first of all, it, what you're doing, what I'm trying to do is expose it, get the word out, let people see it. You know, the NSA is collecting this data for a reason, and it's collecting the data in order to be able to map, model, control That's the right. population. You know, they want to have algorithms at the NSA that predict your behavior before you know what you're going to do. They already have it. They have it, and they and targeting and manipulating that behavior with behaviorally crafted messages, getting you to respond in certain ways you don't even realize. But the fail safe is if you're aware of the magic trick, it's no longer magic. So if it's, people I, will just admit they're being conned, this can I, all stop. The whole point of a magic trick is once you know how it's done, it's no longer powerful. That's where a mystery is no longer intriguing once it's solved. We have to expose this. And, and it has to be put a stop to because even the left should at, a point, at some point realize that this data is going to be used you know, against everybody. Yeah, the, the first thing a regime comes into power from the left, the socialists and communists do is destroy the press that has helped them get in there. So anyone who thinks that helping the Obama agenda or playing along with it is going to reward you, you're just being a, you know, an, a, exactly. a dupe. you're being a, a useful fool. They want you poor so they can run your life. In closing, I've seen emails and comments saying I'm lying about uh, the Washington Post, you name it, saying U.S. quietly repeals propaganda ban, spreads government-made news to Americans. We all know that's been going on true. Uh, 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 forever. But, but, but the point is, this is now globalist New World Order running our CIA. How do we counter that? The only news you're going to get is the officially approved news. I mean, that's where it's headed with a press that's dummy down and it's just reproducing the government's press releases as if they were truth. Now the government's going to go in the business of having its own news agencies for the American public, like the Voice of America and other propaganda broadcasts we've only used for foreigners. It's a complete control of the media. So that anyone like you, Alex, or like me that wants to expose or oppose this, are going to be, you know, have Media Matters, George Soros, come to, to call us names, marginalize us. Uh, if we ever get on Fox or any of the media, uh, make sure that Fox is bombarded by Media Matters. The advertisers are bombarded. Look, these people are uh, every bit as much fascists on the left. You know, National Socialists. 
No, no, they're they're authoritarian gangsters, and 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 with Republicans, okay. it's corrupt interest. We're in trouble. The, the problem is, it's true. The Obamanoids are a cancer. They're going for it all right now. Will they win? Uh, they got a good chance of winning, and uh, the problem too is that the uh, if the Republican Party stays a centrist party, it's going to be very hard to distinguish Republicans from Democrats. And notice the Democrats all day tell Republicans how to win. Oh, we're your friends. Be moderate. Agree with us and you'll win, knowing full well that's how they're going to all lose. It's up to the constitutionalists, the people, the Tea Party. You know, you're going to have, look, the cities versus the rest of the country. Take the cities out of America. You've got a very different America. The cities are where the power base is of the left. And it's minority ridden. Hispanics increasingly going to the cities, poverty, no jobs, broken families, uh, drugs, crime. This is it. And if they can, they'll try to disarm the population in the process of saying it's going to make people safer. And that's Agenda 21, forcing us into the city grids city. where they can actuary the taxes to bankrupt everybody and make us dependent. This is slavery. These people are technocratic slave masters. Dr. Jerome Corsi, the book's now available everywhere. We're going to get you back on for a full hour in the next few weeks. Just tell us the time. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks very much, Alex. Great pleasure to be back with you. You bet. Thank you. Yeah, no, this is a total plan, ladies and gentlemen, and it's disgusting. I'm now you can watch the InfoWars nightly news streaming live as it happens for free. Check it out at InfoWars.com forward slash show.